We're headed to the Center for Electromechanics at UT Austin's Pickle Research Campus because they're working on something potentially very big with the minuscule algae found in wastewater ponds. The algae program at UT began with the focus on developing a cost-effective end-to-end solution for extracting energy-rich bio-oils from algae. The overall idea is to grow up the algae that is rich in lipids for biofuel, to crack the algae open, remove those lipids without coming in contact with harsh solvents or, um, or chemicals, and then you can use that clean biomass for whatever purpose you want. And the purpose that we've focused on is for, for use as a biofertilizer. So this is our um, algae laboratory. With help from a student-funded green fee grant and a few interns, Dr. Rekha Connolly is working to assess this potentially ground healing discovery. Where the green fee funding comes in is, oh, what do we do with this clean biomass? And what they're funding is our pilot study and scale-up study to see if that can be used as a biofertilizer on campus and maybe ultimately replace the commercial fertilizers that they're currently um, purchasing every year. So now we're going to go outside. From assessing collection and growth of algae strains to running the field experiments, Dr. Connolly oversees the critical experimentation phase of the project. And here are um, test beds for growing Bermuda grass. The algae was actually trending a little bit higher, a little bit better than the commercial fertilizer, uh, but it was not statistically different. But that's good news that it works just as well, maybe even a little bit better. So what's wrong with conventional fertilizers? And how can algal-based fertilizers help? So the big three in terms of impacts of synthetic fertilizer production and use our environment is one, eutrophication and production of these oxygen-poor environments in the oceans and in freshwater environments called dead zones. Right? Another one is the high energy cost to make all of this fertilizer and that winds up putting a lot of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And the third one is one of the byproducts that's made of taking all the nitrogen as a gas and two out of the atmosphere is N2O which N2, when it's originally naturally in the atmosphere, is an inert gas, but N2O is a greenhouse gas. But CEM Director Bob Hebner is optimistic about the future of agriculture. My interest in this program is that we're, we're, really, we're in the business of trying to change the world. And with electromechanics, we have uh, figured out how to uh, open up algae to do make oils and other chemicals that you want to have. But algae as a fertilizer is an absolutely great use for the biomass. And it may change the way we do, it, it may take us back to a more organic, uh, more earth-friendly way of growing uh, everything, to rebuild the earth uh, using algae rather than, uh, than take away from the earth the way we're doing today with our chemical fertilizers. With this algae research, once again UT may prove what starts here changes the world. They need horses. I know.